Welcome back everyone to Textual Criticism, a series that we've been going through for the past couple of weeks. Today we are moving into the Hebrew Bible specifically, and we're going to take a look at the sources that we have for the Hebrew Bible, beginning with probably the most important, the Masoretic Text, and we're going to do this in uh, several parts. So let's get started. We're going to take a look at what the Masoretic Text is in general, uh, the importance of the consonants as opposed to the vowels, and when those two things came into being, at least in their written form, the number of manuscripts that are in this group called the Masoretic Text, and the significance of the MT. So, what is the Masoretic Text? Masoretic Text is given its name from the Mazorah, that was eventually transmitted with the Hebrew text. So if you remember, the Mazora, well, I'll show you in just a second, its primary development came in the 10th century with the Ben Asher family. This portion represents the main text. Over here and down here, however, we have notes, things that were added to insights, things that were counted, the Karaika thieves, all of these things show up in the Mazora. And so this is what was transmitted later with the main text of the Hebrew Bible. So, the Masoretic text gets his name from this Mazora that was transmitted and it was firmly developed in the 10th century. What is the Masoretic text? Well, strictly speaking, it refers to the Ben Asher tradition. The problem is that when we say that, we often refer to the Masoretic text as not speaking strictly about the Ben Asher tradition. We're talking about all the manuscripts in the Masoretic text. So it's, it's a little bit of a misnomer to just call it the Masoretic text. The other thing is it's not strictly one text. So there's not one manuscript somewhere, one codex, or something that we look at and we say, aha, this is the Masoretic text. You know, it's a family, a group of manuscripts that follow this tradition, this Masoretic text tradition. So it's more appropriate to, as Tove does, call it the Masoretic texts, plural, or the group or family of the Masoretic texts. So consonants versus vowels. The Hebrew text was originally only consonants. So if you look here, so if you see the little dashes, the dots that are underneath of those strange looking larger characters, those are the vowels and the accent marks. They usually show up, the vowels at least, usually show up underneath of the consonants. The larger text, just above that blue line, those are the consonants. So originally, if you notice, there are no vowel points. There are no accent marks. This is the Qumran scroll 1Q Isaiah A, the great Isaiah scroll. This is chapter 53. Um, but if you notice, there are no marks underneath or uh, above the text. It's only the consonants. So this is originally how Hebrew was written. These consonants form the base of the Masoretic text, and they come from the Second Temple period, so you know, the late 6th century uh, until the fall of the Second Temple, 70 CE. This consonantal text became authoritative to the Jewish community by the Second Century CE. So the thing that we want to realize here, that, that the point if you want to take something home, is that the consonants were there, not the vowels. Right? So that doesn't mean that there weren't vowels being pronounced, it's just they didn't write them. So what we see in something like BHS, what we've been putting up on the screen, this is another tradition, a later part of the Masoretic tradition, where these vowel points were added. And there are different systems of vowel points that were added throughout time in different Hebrew traditions. So we need to keep that in mind. We call this consonantal base proto-Masoretic because it doesn't have the Mazara and it's the, the foundation of what the Masoretic text tradition was you know, built upon, and so we call it proto 
Masoretic. How many manuscripts are there? Well, uh, over 6,000. That would be considered part of the Masoretic text family. The print editions of the Hebrew Bible are based on the MT. Now, the significance of the MT. Well, I already mentioned that the Jewish community viewed the Masoretic text as authoritative by the 2nd century CE. Tove stresses that just because the MT had a great significance in, the, in this early community, it does not follow that it contains the best or the original readings. Just because this textual tradition was authoritative in a way that other traditions were not does not mean that it necessarily contains the best readings. So the Septuagint, the Syriac Peshitta, you know, some of these other sources, the Latin Vulgate, they may contain better readings. You can't just say that because the Masoretic textual tradition was authoritative to the early Jewish community that that means that it contains the original or the best readings. Tomorrow we're going to continue and we're going to look at the first of the three periods of transmission of the Masoretic text.